Welcome back, everybody. My name is Taylor Martin. This is the best damn EDC, and it's time for me to do an updated EDC. I've not done this in a long time. I used to do them pretty regularly, but I've kind of stopped switching out gear so much. There are some things that are staples, but there are other things that just kind of stay in constant rotation. So I felt like not enough had changed for me to do one of these. Now maybe it has, but regardless, this is my EDC update 2022 or summer 2022. And with that said, Let's do the damn thing. So to get things kicked off, we're gonna start with the key setup, mainly because it hasn't really changed all that much. A few things have been swapped out, but nothing is really functionally any different. It all starts with this right here, and this is the JRW Tough Clip, as you can see, JRW. But this one has Topo on it, and that's because this was a Carry Commission uh, collaboration. We're gonna be bringing them back. Carry Commission is coming back in August at long last. I've been working really hard on getting it back to where I wanted it to be, and uh, we're about to do some drops in August. And I'm, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that, but there will be more Tough Clips uh, in titanium, Topo, as well as brass. So uh, this has been a staple since Jamie gave me the very first one. Uh, I absolutely love it. I got to try out a prototype, killer product, very simple. And so many people have said I would never pay that much money for a paperclip, but this has been the best key solution for me, period. Bar none, no question about it. This thing is awesome. The one addition to it though is the O-ring. So Jamie has actually started shipping these things with O-rings and you just put it on here to retain anything you don't want falling off. Pretty simple. It comes on and off very easily, but it keeps things from accidentally falling off. And then the other two things I have, I have uh, on this split ring, I have a Glow Rhino Glow Fob in Tritium. This is a black one with a glass breaker. This is just to index things. If you lose this thing in the dark, you can find it because of this Glow Fob. That's all there is to it. These things work amazingly and I've started putting these tritium fobs on so many different things. Like my flashlight, when I'm backpacking, I put one of these glow fobs on it. And then we have the Nice Guy Machine Company Function F key, and this is effectively just a, a keychain sized pry bar. I think I may have used it one time. I don't really use it, but I like how it looks. And I carry this basically to support a friend of mine. Archie's a great dude, and because it looks cool. The, sometimes that's all you really need to be carrying something or have it on your person or in your carry. So this is just support and because I think it looks cool, but the glow fob does actually serve a, a purpose. And then what I have my keys organized with, uh, I used to carry the true utility shackle. As you guys probably know by now, that was discontinued, but I stumbled across this uh, KeySmart Mini in doing a recent Amazon video and this replaced that true utility shackle only because the shackle was kind of at a weird angle and when you would try to spread your keys out, they would pinch, so you couldn't actually actuate the keys the way you wanted to. This keeps them on the uh, tough clip just as well. It doesn't rattle as much because it's rubber, and I actually like it a little bit more, and it was 15 bucks, so hard to complain about that, but my keys have not really changed in at least a year. This goes on my belt loop and stays there, and it works exactly as I want it to. And if I need to add like my truck key or something temporarily, it's very easy to do that. So there, the keys have not really changed and that is how they probably will stay for the foreseeable future. Next up we have pens. Uh, ironically, not ironically, stupidly, the pen that I actually carry the most is not here. Uh, I left it at home, I put it in my gym bag because it was in my shorts. Why am I talking like that? my shorts. It was in my shorts. I was going to the gym. I threw it in the bag and it's just stayed there and I keep forgetting to get it out. That one is a dual side click mini from Big Ada Design. It's zirconium and it has a Timascus clip. It's a little bouge. I think that little miniature pin, same size as this one right here, actually retails for somewhere in the $270 or $280 range. It's bougie, it's crazy, but I love that pin. The dual side click, the Timascus, the zirconium. It's just one of those little flashy pieces that I liked. It's subtle, but flashy still, if you know what you're looking at. Although, 
given that, I do actually change out my pins from time to time. For a very long time, this has actually been one of my favorite pins ever. This is the TI Click EDC from Big Idea Design. I recently switched this Timascus clip onto here. It used to have the Topo clip that I lasered at Rick's shop. And this is the pin in that video that we kind of messed up, but I thought it turned out really cool regardless. We were anodizing, but to get some of these parts apart, we flamed it. We wanted to get the collet out from inside, so we had to flame it so that we could uh, take the very tip off of the entire tip. And um, in doing that, we flamed it to release some of the Loctite. And in doing so, I got some oils on my fingers. We thought we cleaned it and then we anodized it and it gave it this crazy gnarly like grungy look. I don't even know if it translates that well on camera. I, I tried to replicate it so we could do a grungy run of these pins. I never could reliably. Regardless, um, this one's been just one of my favorites because we customized it and I just swapped that clip out last week for an ad spot, but kept it because I liked how it looked. So I, I often carry the TI Click EDC, but honestly, I like the size of these mini clicks from Big Idea Design more than anything. I love how compact they are. So before I got that dual side click in the Zerk, I carried this one. This was a green Cerakote version of the mini click and I just, I love it. You can tell I carried it a bunch. It's beat up. That Cerakote's really rubbed off a lot. So this one saw a lot of pocket time and I also really like tactile turn pins and my favorite version from them is the bronze. I have a Timascus bolt and this one has seen a lot of pocket time as well as you can tell because this is bronze and it's very blackened. If you see up under this clip here, it's much more yellow or bronzy. And then down here, it's definitely patinaed. So those are the three pins that I, that I have on hand right now that I've carried the most since the last EDC update. But the, the Black Zerk dual side click has probably seen the most pocket time out of any of them. So wallets are a little bit different. Um, I tend to switch wallets a lot. I, I like wallets. I've always liked wallets and I've had a bunch over the years. This one was actually given to me by Joe, my neighbor here at the office, Rustic Heirloom. Um, he was designing a new wallet. I told him he needed a, a unique design and this is what he came up with and I love it. We, we went back and forth on like different little finishing touches on how he should design it. Like the size of the eyelets and grommets and the snaps and the shape of this little tab. And this is what he ultimately came up with and uh, he tossed one to me, said carry it and tell me what you really think. I really had no complaints. I really liked it. So the way it works is you open this snap and you can put your cards here. You can also put some cards on the back, but this is where you would put your folded either halved or quartered cash. I do quartered, but I don't carry a lot of cash usually. This was the second one of this that I've had. Uh, the first one was a prototype. This was a real one. I carried this every day for a few months and uh, really like it. But since we're entering summer months, I actually end up carrying a hard wallet a little more often than leather because the leather gets really grungy and nasty sometimes, especially if I'm at the lake and I'm getting sweaty or wet or playing in the backyard with the kids. I'd rather have something that's not gonna get wet itself. So I end up carrying a titanium wallet of some sort usually. This is the RAW, a rapid access wallet in titanium, the slim version. These come in two different sizes. He's not made any of these since the first run to my knowledge, but this has been one of my most carried wallets period. I love it. I think it's really great. It's super minimal. Um, we're going to jump out of order here just a little bit because I do have a different wallet in my pocket, but basically your cards slide in and using the same locking mechanism that he uses on the Ruck, the Giltech Ruck or rapid utility knife. It has this forward pressure from the spring on the underside. So if you pull these cards out, you'll hear that spring engage. Right, so that spring is what puts forward pressure and keeps these cards in here pretty tight. Uh, I have maybe five cards, if that. Some of them are actually extra thin, but Rapid Access Wallet has been phenomenal. I love this thing. I don't even know how much they cost. He hasn't made them in a while. I love this thing and it's uber minimal. I think he made an attachment for them for carrying cash, like a money clip attachment, but again, I don't really carry cash that much. This is about as minimal as you can get with a wallet or a card holder. Um, but since I had these and something else, let's talk about that. So once again, this is a rustic heirloom hitchhiker wallet. That's what he ultimately ended up calling it. We called it the prototype snap wallet for a while. Hitchhiker is the name he went with. So you put your cards in here, cash in the back. But this version, as you can see, is a little bit different than this version. And it's not just that this one's worn. This is a carry commission exclusive that we're gonna be dropping next month. And this one is in 
Pueblo leather. I think the color is Olmo. That's O-L-M-O, not Olma, Joe. Olmo, and uh, I love the way that this Pueblo looks. We have green thread, Pueblo leather, and a little green lanyard. And uh, these will be exclusive to carry commission next month. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Follow me and Rustic Heirloom on Instagram for more information. But absolutely love these slim leather wallets. And uh, I'm going to carry this one in my pocket for a while just to get that patina on it and see how it looks by the time we drop it. That's the idea is at least get some, some patina and wear on it before the drop. So in my fifth pocket, every day without fail, I have two multi-tools or two tools. First being the TPT slide, which should be no surprise to any of you. This thing has been a staple for me or a mainstay for ages. Um, and then the other, also probably not much of a surprise, we have the SOG power pint, which I'm sure you guys are tired of hearing me talk about. This is just one of the best sized multi-tools with the, one of the best uh, tool configurations out there, especially for something you're gonna carry in your pocket every single day. I love this thing. I get that it's probably not for everybody, but this thing is just super handy to me. You've got a set of scissors. You have a bottle opener, Phillips head, a can opener, and we have a fully serrated blade on this side. All of these are locking as well. So once they're opened, you'd have to push this lock to disengage, or as at least 800 people commented in the last video that I talked about this thing, you can just open up another tool and close them all together. Sorry, I missed that, guys. Uh, on the other side, you've got a file with two different sides, a wood and a metal file. You have a cord cutter, which is a little more visible from the other side, a very narrow flat head, which is probably the most used thing for me, an awl and a straight edge blade. And then of course you have the bit driver in the handle, wire cutters, wide pliers, needle nose pliers, and I think that's it. Super handy tool. I use it regularly, um, if not every day, very, very close to every day. And then the TPT slide. This is the newer version of mine with the new best MEDC logo, a new topo pattern. Otherwise, it's the same thing as before. Little rusty blade because I've been using the crap out of it and sweating in my yard. This is just what I use for breaking down boxes, um, cutting things that I don't want to cut with my knife because I'm being stupid or something, meaning I might be cutting through something that has a wire in it or something like that. I don't want to ruin a good blade. I don't want to ruin my edge just processing down cardboard because I have boxes out the nose and I don't just flatten them. I cut them down so they'll fit in a trash can. But yeah, other things like cutting open a thing of chemicals, right? So sometimes I use my knife for food prep and by sometimes I mean probably every day I use my pocket knife for food prep. And if I'm cutting open just earlier this week, actually, I was cutting open uh, fire ant bait, which has lots of chemicals in it. And I don't want that on the blade that I'm also maybe gonna use to cut my food. Uh, I use this to cut that open because I don't care. I'm never gonna put this into my mouth and that's what this is really good for. There you go. Anyway, multi-tools that stay in my pocket every day without fail, SOG PowerPoint, TPT slide. So when it comes to flashlights, I catch a little bit of flack, uh, mainly because I only carry pretty expensive flashlights. Um, I'm not necessarily a flashlight snob, but I do have my reasons for it. I'm gonna be completely upfront and honest. I have not bought any of these lights. La Lima gave me this uh, after Blade Show last year. Both of these were sent to me by Jeff from Okluma, and then this one was given to me at Blade Show last year as well by Charles himself. Uh, and I freaking love these lights for a number of reasons, not just because they're expensive, but because they work the way that I really want them to. What I think they really have done the most, these are flashlights made by flashlight nerds. So what that means is that they've put a lot of time and effort into the user interface and the usability of them, and they work just exactly how you would expect they would. They're bomb proof, they're made really well, and without having one, it's really hard to understand what that really means or why that's something that can be justified. All of that is to say, if I have a flashlight in my pocket, it's usually gonna be one of these four. Um, so this is the Lao Lima Ion in bronze. I have two Okluma DC Zeros, bronze and titanium, and then I have a CWF or Charles Wiggins flashlights, micro Arcadian clicky in titanium. I love all of these, probably close to equally. The Lao Lima is a little bit bulky, but I love that secondary light. It's got a red secondary, which is really cool. 
um, especially for late at night. I, I really love that. So this one doesn't have memory. It always defaults to moonlight mode. And that's one of the reasons this is probably my favorite flashlight of all time. Um, no memory, just always def defaults to moonlight. And that moonlight is my most used mode on any flashlight, always. Uh, I usually don't ever use anything over moonlight or low mode unless I really, really need some light or I'm backpacking or camping. And I don't take any of these for that. These are good for EDC, but I don't use them outside that scope. Uh, so same with this. These do have memory, so they don't default to moonlight, but they only have three modes. Um, and then this one, I have the low, secondary, red, and then this is moonlight. Look how dim. You can barely tell that these are all on, but they are. Um, it's so dim. See how close I have to get that to the table for you to even see it? And granted, it's kind of bright in here, but the moonlight on these is just <laughs> exceptional. I'm more impressed by a solid moonlight mode than I am by some crazy lumen number because a super bright flashlight is really not super handy in most scenarios. Like it's cool to show off, but I genuinely rarely ever, rarely ever use turbo unless I'm trying to blind Joe. <laughs> so yeah, make no mistake. I know that these are expensive flashlights and that most of you don't like me talking about expensive flashlights. This is one of the reasons I don't talk about flashlights a whole lot. Um, it's such a tough topic to tackle because while a lot of you who watch will spend $500 on a knife, you won't, you would not spend the same amount of money on a flashlight. And it's kind of the same thing, right? It's, it's a very similar topic. Um, a $500 knife really doesn't cut any better than a $15 knife. And I honestly think that's not exactly the same in a flashlight. There are nuances in flashlights that get better. The more you spend <laughs> the quality of the beam, the color reproduction, the fit and finish, but also most importantly, in my opinion, the user interface and the understanding of that user interface by the people that made the light. That's so hard to convey to somebody who doesn't care. It really is. So when it comes down to it, a flashlight is a flashlight, a knife is a knife. If you don't care any more than that, I can't make you care any more than that. But if you do care, there are some nuances to flashlights that if you haven't really dove into expensive small batch custom lights you're not going to care about them you're not going to know about them and i'm frankly going to be wasting my words trying to explain point is i've tried hundreds if not thousands of flashlights and these are the four that always find their way into my pocket all right you guys are probably pretty sure of what watch i've been wearing it's been in every video it's just a constant i bought this thing i spent too much on it as you guys <laughs> very well know now but this is the garmin mark adventurer which i normally have on this metal bracelet i have it on this athletic strap because I, I wear it when i work out and working out with a metal strap or bracelet is uh not exactly comfortable so uh, i often switch out for this but this is the configuration i normally have this watch in this watch is expensive uh, two thousand dollars for a fitness tracker but it looks very much like a normal watch it wears very much like a normal watch and uh, i've really enjoyed wearing this on my wrist however i've gotten some watches in the mail from companies i've been looking at my watches in the morning and i'm like man i really i just want to wear my watch today so i have placed an order on an aura ring it is out for delivery right now i was hoping it would arrive before we shot this video it's not here however Recently, uh, actually just in the last two days, I have been wearing this right here. This is the Timex James Brand Collaboration Expedition North. So they had the black one, which I also have at home, but now they came out with a white dial. Um, a, a few subtle changes on this one, but man, I really like the look of this, this watch. A good field watch. It's an automatic from Timex, which you don't see very often. Um, they're getting into automatics again. Um, but they, they strayed away from it for a long time. And I threw it on this leather NATO strap. And I know, I know, I know I'm going to get questions about this leather NATO. It has titanium hardware and it is Horween, as you can see right here. This is actually from the Big Idea Design watch. It was a Kickstarter. I don't think they've been delivered yet. I could be wrong on that. Um, but this is the Horween leather strap that comes with that. <laughs> 
This is one of the nicest leather straps I've handled. It's really, really nice. Uh, the perfect weight, it's very thin, but it's, it's just, it's good. And then of course, this one has been getting some wrist time off and on whenever I decide not to wear the Garmin. This is my Damasco DC58. This is just a phenomenal watch. Um, expensive, again, I know. It's one of the best watches in my collection, in my opinion, in terms of value, the way it wears, the way it looks. It's very unique. It gets some questions every time I wear it because it's this weird, matte, tough looking watch that doesn't look like, like this bracelet looks totally different from a lot of other watches you see. Um, you don't see bracelets like this on a watch ever it's seamless right you can barely see where the clasp is it's just it's awesome i really hate narrowing this down to five knives i have like eight i have eight knives over here i'm just going to put them on the table i'm not going to talk about them all but i've been carrying so many different knives uh, this is more than eight these are all the knives that i've been carrying and using actually that's not even true either hang on i told myself i told myself i'm going to narrow it down and I'm only gonna talk about five knives. Well, I lied. These are all the knives that I've been <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, it's impossible to do. I change with the knife all the time. Um, if I was gonna narrow it down to the ones I've carried the absolute most since Blade Show, it would be down to these knives. I did narrow that down. Um, but I still love the, I, it's so hard for me to just pick some. So these have also been the pocket as well as some others. So they're on the camera. You can ask questions about them. I'll talk about them in another video, whatever, moving on. The five knives that I've carried the absolute most since Blade Show would be these. I, I realize there are six knives here, I'll explain. But let's start with the least most carried knives out of those five since Blade Show. And that would be this one right here, this is the TW Price Design Dawn. This is an M390 front flipper on bearings, frame lock, titanium handle, uh, lock bar insert, all that jazz. Um, you guys kind of know the gist by now. There's so many of them, but this just looks phenomenal. I saw this thing probably back in December, right before he did his pre-order. And as soon as he opened the pre-order, I knew I had to grab one. It was an insta follow for me. I knew I was buying it immediately, and I'm so glad I did. I love the mill patterns. I love the shape. I love everything. It's a little perfect size, but I think it's a fantastic knife. It's manufactured by Best Tech. You've got these mill pockets on the blade, so you can still spidey flick if you want, thumb flick it as well. TW Price Design Dawn. This thing is awesome. Next up is this one. I've had this knife for a long time. I've carried it off and on. But it's just, it's just up there with some of my favorite knives. I love the shape, the lines, the size, the way it feels, the way it looks. I love pretty much everything about this knife. This is the CKF or Custom Knife Factory uh, 520. And I have had it in two different configurations. I had the marble carbon fiber version with the Zerk bolsters and this one. So this one is an all TI. Um, M390 blade, serial number 100. I don't know what run it was, but just one of the best front flippers ever made. You're not ever gonna change my mind. It looks good, feels good. It looks very bushcrafty too. Like, look at that blade size and shape. If this had a Scandi grind, this would be a bushcraft knife. Like, I don't know. I just really like it. And 520 regularly, regularly finds time in the pocket. This is one of, I think, the most recent knife acquisition of mine, but since I bought it, it's not coming out of the pocket. This is, of course, a Hinderer XM18, three and a half inch. This is a Sponto, so it's not quite Tonto, but it does have that really reinforced tip. This is also an M390. It has the Battle Bronze rear handle, and then I have added this scale. It had a black G10 scale. I put this one on here. This is from Sharp Dress Knives. It is a maroon something micarta but i love it it's almost like an old rag it looks like an old shop rag with some stains on it that got turned into micarta maybe that's what it is i don't know but it also has aftermarket hardware these little screws you no longer need allen to be able to uh take this thing apart you can take this apart with a victorinox like a swiss army knife and the only thing i did other than putting the scale on it is i put it on teflon washers look at this <laughs> i mean it's so good i love this knife on teflon Hate on Teflon all you want, but it's good. It's 
really good. Just tough ass knives and uh, I really, really like this one. The only complaint is that it carries like a tank in the pocket too. Like you're not ever gonna forget you have an XM18 three and a half inch in your pocket ever. Carried slightly more than that would be this one right here. This is the Prometheus Design Works Invictus ATB. I talked about this in the 10 knives that I'll never sell video. It's true, never selling this thing. I absolutely love this. This might be one of my favorite knife designs ever. Um, I love the spear point. I love the lines. I love how it looks. I love how it feels in the hand. I, there's just nothing I don't like about this knife at all. I, I love it. But this is the Terrain 365 collaboration version. So this one has Teravantium steel, which means this whole knife is rust proof, not rust resistant, not slightly stainless or extra stainless. It is rust proof. It cannot be rusted. And I love that. I need more of that in my life. And yeah, this is going to be probably my backpacking knife. My only real complaint about this is that I don't have more Invictus knives. That's it. Uh, and then the last one, this after blade show was, I was just, the honeymoon period was strong with this one. And I still love it. I still absolutely love this Mac to 3.5. It looks good. It is again, as I said, one of the most me knives ever made. The colors, the size, shape, it's just, it's a beefcake and I love it. But the only reason that this wasn't the most carried is because, well, Jonathan also sent me this. So I bought this one at Blade Show and then they sent me the Automac. And I'm not usually an automatic fan. I'm, I'm genuinely not, but this thing surprised the hell out of me. It kicks like a mule. It is rock solid. There's no blade play. I mean, this thing is just perfect. And both of these are Magna Cut. So when I'm working in the yard, because I really like these as like work knives, uh, no problems with it, no worries of it rusting or anything similar to the Invictus, but man, this thing fires out so hard. And I just, I love how it looks. I really, really do. Um, I find it really hard to explain how much I like some of these knives because I love them all so much, but I just have to say, I feel kind of blessed. I've got so many great knives. Um, and it feels like a really stupid thing to complain about having too many knives. <laughs> yeah, I just wish I could carry them all, all the time. So some days I throw two knives in the pocket. So fight me, that was not a fart, that was my shoe, okay? <laughs> yeah, some days I just throw two knives in the pocket and uh, sometimes I struggle and maybe throw three knives in the pocket. Don't care. Anyway, that's my carry update. I know it's kind of messy, it always is. As I've said over the years, since being in EDC, I'm, I don't have an everyday carry anymore. There are only a few things that are staples. Like when I get a new watch, I usually only wear that watch for a while. Um, the wallet doesn't change a whole lot, but sometimes it does. Like it's so hard to make EDC update videos because it's rarely ever the same for a significant amount of time. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you've got any questions about any of this stuff, let me know in the comments down below. And all of this stuff that I talked about will be linked in the comments down below. So if you wanna support what I'm doing here, many of those are affiliate links. If you click any of those and purchase anything, help support what we're doing by giving us a little bit of a kickback. It doesn't cost you anything extra. You can also support the channel by going to patreon.com forward slash best But with that said, and until next time, carry on.